Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation or we're going to attempt to solve an equation with tangent. What does this have to do with complex numbers? If you look at i, you hopefully know what it is. It's the square root of negative 1, the principal square root, I should say. It's also defined or can be defined as the number whose square equals negative 1 because there's only I was going to say one number, but there are two numbers. But i squared is negative 1. That's all I can say. i squared equals negative 1. One thing to always keep in mind. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, how do we solve a problem like this? By the way, uh, I also have another channel called Cyber Math. Uh, if you like uh, number theory and algebra problems, you can also go out and check it out. So, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem. And I will try to present two methods. Uh, when I thought about this problem, obviously, I'm like, okay, how can I uh, make this a nice problem, kind of like change it? Or maybe I've seen this problem somewhere. I can't remember exactly. Maybe it was in a book or something. Sometimes it's hard to distinguish. But anyways, let's go ahead and look at the first method first. For my first method, I'm going to go ahead and write the tangent theta as sine theta over cosine theta. That should always be true, right? By the way, Theta can also be non-real complex, which is fine. Uh, we can define, but in that case, uh, sine and cosine are not bound by one and negative one. Okay, it's a different story. But here's the question I think will come up later, but can tangent of any angle, including non-real complex angles, be anything like including complex imaginary or non-real numbers? Make sense? Can tangent be anything? Think about the like the biggest set, right? Anyways, we'll try to answer that question in a little bit. But first of all, let's uh, simplify this. I will make a common denominator. So it'll be cosine theta plus i sine theta divided by cosine theta. That's the common denominator to the fifth power. I know it's kind of tempting to take the fifth root, and you can, but I, I'd like to caution against it uh, because we're dealing with complex numbers and you can't just take the fifth root because a complex number has five fifth roots. Make sense? So, n nth roots. That's why we have to be very careful not to just oversimplify. And if you look at the numerator, uh, by the way, if you're new to complex numbers, you go ahead and check out my lecture videos. But the numerator by Euler's formula can be turned into something nice. What is cosine theta plus i sine theta? How can we write it in a shorter, much for shorter form? Thanks to Euler. We can write it as e to the power i theta. e is Euler's number, by the way, of course. Um, this formula uses Euler's number, right? It's amazing, isn't it? Like, you can express the sum as an exponential function. Beautiful. Very compact and extremely helpful in many scenarios. Now, think about this. You're trying to multiply two complex numbers in this form. All we have to do is turn them into polar form, which is Euler form, and then just use exponents. You see, you can kind of go from trigonometry to exponents. Nice. Now, that gives us the following, e to the i theta, and let's separate these now. Cosine theta to fifth equals 32. And then we can kind of think about it this way. I think we can kind of put the cosine theta on the right-hand side. Now, assuming that cosine is real, cosine theta is real, I can now take the fifth root of both sides, right? But, again, we've got to be very careful. How do you take the fifth root, fifth power of e to the i theta? First of all, that's going to be e to the power 5i theta, right? And then this expression can probably be written as follows. I can write it as 32 times cosine theta to the fifth power, but 32 can be written as 32 times e to the power 2 pi n i, right? And then times cosine theta to the fifth power. So this would be more appropriate because now when we take the fifth root, it would make kind of more sense. So here's what I'm going to do. We have a number on the left-hand side, which can be written as cosine 5 theta plus i sine 5 theta, in uh, standard form, uh, which tells us that, okay, it's modulus, absolute value is 1, because 
Think about it. Complex numbers can be written as r e to the i theta. r represents the modulus or the absolute value, but here there's no number, so it's 1. The right-hand side should also have the same modulus, because if I do absolute value on both sides, that should give me the same thing, right? So this times this will probably make up the absolute value. So when I do the fifth power, this is going to give me e to the i theta equals, if I take the fifth root here, that's going to give me 2 cosine theta times e to the power 2 pi and i divided by 5. I just raised this to the power 1 fifth. Make sense? Now, take a look. We said that the modulus on the left-hand side is 1, so it also needs to be 1 here. Nice. That gives us 2 cosine theta equals 1, which implies cosine theta equals 1 half. By the way, you could arrive at this result in different ways, right? What I did is not the only way to do it. But another thing uh, that happens here is if this is 1, this should equal that, right? So in other words, e to the i theta equals e to the 2 pi and i divided by 5 which means the exponents are supposed to equal. But one thing to keep in mind is maybe I should not just write them equal to each other. Should I add like 2 pi ki to it, right? Multiples of 2 pi because you can always add it. You can always multiply one side by one, which is e to the power 2 pi ki. For n and k are integers, by the way, I probably forgot to say that, but you probably guessed it. Now, we could go ahead and divide everything by uh, i, That'll give us 2 pi n over 5 plus 2 pi k. And then from here, theta should be one of these angles, right? If k is equal to 0, n is equal to 0, then you'll get 0. But 0 is not going to satisfy cosine theta equals 1 half. Wait a minute. If k is 0, and I can just run through the n values, n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Multiples of 2 pi over 5? Think about it. Those are like 72 degrees. None of the multiples, because they're always going to be relatively prime to 5, right? 0 through 4, I mean 1 through 4 at least. So we'll never get an angle whose cosine is 1 half. So what is going on here? There's something wrong with this, right? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Maybe I made a mistake and this messed everything up. Let's look at the second method, shall we? And by the way, I did not consider the fact that uh, theta could be complex in this case, but maybe I did. Who knows? Okay. I'm going to do a more direct approach and just take the fifth root, because why not? If you take the fifth root, you're going to get 1 plus i tan theta equals 2, which is kind of like a more direct approach, but obviously this is one of the solutions, right? If there's a solution. From here, we get i tangent theta equals 1, and then finally, you can divide both sides by, you can divide both sides by i, or multiply by negative i, which gives you negative i squared, but negative i squared is equal to 1, so that just cancels out. That's why I multiply by that. And this gives us tangent theta equals negative i. How nice, right? Can tangent theta be negative i? Good question. So that's why we need to consult a formula or look at a triangle maybe. If tangent theta is negative i, of course, this is an imaginary triangle. Just imagine we have this. This will be 1. Uh, from Pythagorean theorem, this will be 0. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Look at this, cosine is going to be undefined. If cosine is undefined, tangent can't be that, which means tangent can never be negative i. So that kind of answers the question. Can tangent be anything? No, I don't think so. It can't be negative i. But let's just check with Wolfram Alpha because Wolfram Alpha, uh-oh, we got solutions. Where do they come from? I don't know. Maybe you'll answer that question because I'm not sure. I haven't checked everything, but you can hopefully tell me why Wolfram Alpha thinks these are solutions, by the way. This is pi. And if you look at the details, it says for tangent theta equals negative i, no solutions exist. Of course, that's the truth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.